A long time ago, there lived a boy called Jack. His mother was busy from early in the morning until late in the evening. She would sell the milk and butter which Milky White, the beautiful cow, gave them. But one morning, Milky White gave no milk at all. Not one drop. Then his mother sobbed. What shall we do? What shall we do? We must sell Milky White and live on the money. That's right, Jack cried. We will sell Milky White and be richer than ever. So, as it is market day, I'll just take her there and we shall see what we shall see. Trust me to get a good price for her. Not less than 10 pounds, she said as Jack was leaving. Jack was just deciding what he should buy his mother when he saw a queer little old man on the road who called out, Good morning, Jack. Good morning, replied Jack with a polite bow. Wondering how the queer little old man happened to know his name. And where may you be going? Asked the queer little old man. Jack wondered again, but being always polite, he replied, I am going to market to sell Milky White, and I mean to get a good price for her. So you will. So you will, chuckled the queer little old man. I bet you know how many beans make five. As he spoke, he drew out of his pocket five beans. Well, here they are, so give me Milky White. What? Jack said at last. My Milky White for five ordinary beans? But they aren't ordinary beans, put in the queer little old man. And there was a queer little smile on his queer little face. If you plant these beans overnight, by morning they will have grown up right up into the sky. Did you say right up into the sky? Jack then asked. Right up into the sky, repeated the queer old man. It's a good bargain, Jack. And if they don't, meet me here tomorrow morning and you shall have Milky White back again. Will that please you? Yes, that's fine, said Jack, and thought. If what the queer little old man said isn't true, I shall get Milky White back tomorrow morning. What a long time you've been, exclaimed his mother, who was waiting for him at the gate. Tell me quickly how much you got for Milky White. You'll never guess, began Jack, and held out the beans triumphantly. There, he said. That's what I got for her, and a jolly good bargain, too. But all she said was, What? Five beans? Yes, replied Jack. But they're magic beans. If you plant them overnight, by morning they will grow right up into the sky. Oh, please don't hit me so hard. Jack's mother for once lost her temper, and when she had finished beating him, she flung the miserable beans out of the window and sent him to bed. However, he soon fell asleep. When he woke, he thought at first it was moonlight, for everything in the room had a greenish glow. Then he stared at the little window. It was covered as if with a curtain of leaves. He jumped out of bed and without waiting to dress, he was climbing up the biggest beanstalk you ever saw. One of the beans, which his mother had thrown into the garden, had landed in some soil, taken root, and grown in the night right up into the sky. Jack was at any rate determined to find out where it went.
So he climbed, and he climbed, and he climbed. Then he saw in front of him a wide, shining white road, stretching far away into the distance. So he set off walking, and he walked, and walked, and walked, till he came to a tall, shining white house with a wide, white doorstep. And on the doorstep stood a big woman with a black porridge pot in her hand. So Jack said quite politely, Good morning. I wonder if you could give me some breakfast. Breakfast, echoed the woman. I'm expecting my man home at any moment, and there is nothing he likes better for breakfast than a boy. A fat boy grilled on toast. Now Jack was by no means a coward. So he said cheerfully, I'd be fatter if I'd had my breakfast. The woman laughed and invited <laughs> Jack to come in. But he had hardly finished the great bowl of porridge and milk she gave him when the whole house began to tremble and quake. It was the ogre coming home. Into the oven, cried the woman. And the iron oven door had just closed when the ogre strode in. He was certainly a big one. He had three sheep hung on his belt, and these he threw down on the table. Here, wife, he cried, roast me these for breakfast. I hope the oven's hot. Roast, echoed the woman. Pooh! The little things would be too dry. Better boil them. The ogre began sniffing about the room. Then he frowned horribly and began a real ogre's rhyme. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Don't be silly, said his wife. Come and eat your breakfast. So the ogre ate his three sheep and went to a big oak chest and took out three big bags of golden coins. Then he put them on the table and began to count their contents. His head began to nod, and at last he began to snore and snored so loudly that the whole house shook. Then Jack nipped out of the oven and seizing one of the bags of gold, crept away and ran along the straight, wide, shining white road. But the ogre woke up, saw Jack running off and rushed after him. There wasn't time to think, so Jack flung his burden down first and began to go down as fast as he could. He climbed down faster and faster. The minute Jack touched the ground, he seized the axe and gave the beanstalk a great chop. He cut the stalk down so that the ogre fell and, of course, broke his crown and died on the spot. After that, Jack and his mother lived happily on the gold coins for a long time. <laughs>